Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium for tonight's matchup, the home opener, as the Weymouth Wildcats come to town to face your Brockton Boxer football team. I'm my dog, Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, home opener doesn't get much bigger than that. No, it doesn't get much better than this. Band's excited, the players are excited, the cheerleaders are excited, and of course our, our um, spectators are excited. But this should be a big, motivative game for Brockton since they come off that tough loss against Lexington last week. Miles, you mentioned the game against Lexington, the final score 42 to 28. That does not at all tell the story of the game. It was 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Lexington up big on Brockton. And then Brockton came back to make it 28 to 21. Lexington in the lead and then Lexington ran away with it. The starting quarterback, Jose Montero Jr., he's coming off a season in which he did not play a single game, torn ACL in the preseason. Before that, he had some knee injuries about halfway through the prior season. So he's playing his first season in about two years. And he launched them for big passing against the Minutemen. 229 yards through the air, 16 out of 30. No interceptions and three touchdowns. Yeah, that's what he has to continue doing, pass and try to avoid the run so he can stay healthy. Brockton kicking off and a fairly healthy return for the Wildcats up to the 25 yard line. And that is where we will have the first look of the day at senior quarterback, Dan Picard. Yeah, I think a big test this season for the boxers is their line offensively as well as defensively. They had a tough time against Lexington last week, but you saw they stepped up to get back into the game. The thing is, they're going to have to control the line of scrimmage, defense as well as offense the whole game. They can't let guys push them around like that. So they really have to focus on pushing the other team around. Brockton, last week, with only going with three men on the defensive line of scrimmage. Now they have four this game, try to put some more pressure on the quarterback. It's a quarterback keeper for Picard. He goes right up the gut and has a gain of about four yards. Yeah, that's a good move by the coaches. They didn't have a lot of success with three man rushing. So you, like you said, right now they got a four man set right there and on, on the front line. So it's a second and a long five, we'll call it five for the Wildcats. Split receivers, one to each side. And another quarterback keeper and a first down. This is number nine, Benny Randolph with the direct snap. Yeah, Benny had a hole open, wide open for him by his left side of that offensive line. Box is going to do a little better job there on third down. Split receivers, one to each side. And it's a quarterback keeper again. I believe this is Benny Randolph swallowed up after a gain of about two. Nice job of the boxers to fill in that outside gap. Almost looked like the quarterback was gonna do something once he had the hole open, but the boxers closed it up very quickly on the outside. Nice play by the boxers. So Randolph listed as a linebacker from the edge. Playing a little bit of fullback early in this game. Has not attempted a pass thus far, and it is Randolph in the shotgun again. Split receivers, one to each side. Another quarterback keeper, Randolph finds a hole, and has another gain of about three yards this time. It will be third and about five. Yeah, he did a nice job finding something that was, wasn't really there, 
to get that extra couple of yards. Big third down play for the Brockton defense again. Weymouth wearing their away white jerseys, maroon and gold trim, Brockton. Their home blacks, maroon pants, black and white stripe down the side, and the boxer decal on their maroon helmets. 8.15 left to go in the first quarter, a third and officially four for the Wildcats. Timeout, Weymouth. Weymouth calling a timeout. Miles, some interesting stats last week for the boxers. They had three sacks on Jose Montero Jr. for negative uh, sacks of 15 yards or more loss. Their line couldn't hold up against the much bigger, faster Lexington team. They were still able to get 214 yards through the air. Yeah, a lot of offense last week by the boxers. It's just the defense couldn't hold the um, fort, giving up 42 points. Brockton always big on the run game on the offensive side of the ball. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, the captain of the boxers, nine carries for 133 yards, and we have a false start against the Wildcats. Yeah, it looks like the tackle of the tight end over there on the right hand side of that offensive line jumped ahead the defensive stats from last week Sonny Oak and Lola the senior lineman for the boxers four tackles two assisted tackles and Dexter Cumberlander with six tackles and two assists. Same formation, split receivers, one to each side, and it is Benny Randolph in the shotgun yet again. Randolph, quarterback keeper, flags thrown, and Randolph is close to the first down marker. I believe the spot will be just shy, but a flag on the play, and it's going to go against the Wildcats. Illegal shift, the official call. Five yard penalty, that'll bring up about a third and nine. Bring up third down and nine. Boxers have the opportunity to get this football back for their offense. Long way to go for a first down. It's a race against the weather here at Marciano Stadium on opening night. Some very, very, very dark clouds to the east of us. Randolph, a quarterback keeper, and he's going to be stuffed by a platoon of Brockton boxers. Led, I believe, by number 30, that is Dexter Cumberlander. Yeah, Duxton, Dexter did a nice play you'll see here on the replay. Came shooting right there in the middle. Made the nice tackle with some assists by his defensive teammates. Fourth and 10 for the Wildcats. They're in punting formation. A low end over end kick bouncing at the 38 yard line. No return on this one and Weymouth is going to touch it down at the Brockton 15 yard line. And that's where we're gonna have the first look of the night at senior quarterback, Jose Montero Jr. Miles, we mentioned 229 yards through the air last week. Three sacks, the key is get rid of the ball quickly. Ex exactly. It's better to pass it also as he did last week than run with the football. And let's hope he continues throwing those strikes down to his uh, receivers. His number one receiver, senior captain Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, 
two touchdowns for Mr. Cundiff last game. And it is a pass heavy attack for the boxers this year, something we haven't said in quite a number of years. I believe this is Cundiff right off the bat getting a carry, maybe good for a gain of one. Yeah, that, that play did not fool Weymouth. A lot of movement in the backfield, but men in motion for the boxers. You can see Jose Montero Jr. number four for the boxers wearing a brace around his left knee. That is the knee he tore his ACL in last preseason. Trips to the far side and a lone receiver to the near side. Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Receiving the snap, he's going to keep it himself. Finds a short hold, ultimately gets tripped up around the 27 yard line. Yeah, and he got tripped up by his own man, Rosen Pierre. By accident, of course. It's good for first down, but what could have been for the boxers on that play? Montero Jr. had a lot of room to work with. Trips to the far side. Rosen Pierre flanking Montero Jr. to his left. Terry Jr., quarterback keeper yet again. Now he pitches out to Pierre. Pierre with some room to work with. He gets through two blockers, and he's off to the races. The 30, the 20, the 10, and the end zone. Touchdown, boxers. Wow. The way he put on a burst of speed and the power, he just shook off tacklers as he went around the corner and down the field and just put it in hyper speed. Wow, what a play. He got through not one. Not two, not three, but four or five Weymouth Wildcats. There's one, he splits the defense right there, and then he's off to the races seeing nothing but green. Yeah, excellent run by the young man, Pierre. Showed his speed and his strength to elude tacklers and outrun them. Flags thrown on the extra point attempt that did sail through the uprights. And it's going to be a re-kick a couple yards back. Kicker for the boxers, Max Tobub. His second attempt, right through the uprights. Seven nothing, Brockton on top. Three Wildcats deep to receive this kickoff from Tobub. He now has five extra points on the air, a short end over end kick taken at the 25, splitting up field and brought down at the 35 yard line, a 10 yard return. And the Wildcats will start there. Yeah, that touchdown, be Pierre really woke up this boxer fan base here in the band. Uh, 
So seven nothing boxers, Weymouth with another crack at it. It is Randolph again, this time getting stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of about two. Boxers did a nice job stuffing a hole right there. Nowhere for the quarterback to go. Packed house here at Marciano Stadium, a healthy sized student section. Seated directly in front of us, and of course, the marching band. Split receivers for the Wildcats, who has still not attempted a pass. They do the same here, and again, stuff behind the line. And this was not Randolph, but number 23. Wow, the great hit right there. That was Seth, Mc, uh, Seth Mullen, the sophomore running back. Cumberlander on the tackle again. He's had quite the impact on the defensive side of the ball thus far, Miles. Yeah, he's definitely leading this boxer squad. Benny Randolph in the shotgun. He's going to attempt his first pass of the game, looking long, and it's complete. And brought down at the 39-yard line of the boxers. Yeah, that was a nice job. Problem was our defensive back had his back to the quarterback and he didn't see the pass before it was too late. Nice job of the receiver to adjust to the pass. And that was Tyler Campbell at quarterback attempting the first pass of the night for Weymouth. First and 10 for the Wildcats from the Boxers 39 yard line. This is Randolph on the quarterback sneak all the way up to the 29 yard line. It'll be close to another first down. That was a nice fake by the quarterback and a good block by the tackle. Kept that defensive end from getting around the corner and keeping the quarterback from gaining the yardage that he just gained. Makes it second and a second and about one. A timeout called by Brockton. So second and one for the Wildcats. Brockton High School marching band getting the crowd pumped here. As we approach three minutes remaining in the first quarter, the score remains seven nothing. Brockton on top of Weymouth, a 62 yard run by Rosen Pierre. Benny Randolph again right up the gut. He has the first down and a few insurance yards for the Wildcats. Weymouth's quarterback is doing a good job taking what Brockton gives them and they've slowly moved down the field. Now they're close to the red zone few yards out. Randolph handing off and this time stuffed. Maybe a gain of about one. A timeout called I believe by 
Weymouth. Oh, long second down, nine yards to go for the uh, Weymouth Wildcats. Two thirty nine to go, second and call it eight for Weymouth. Brockton facing Catholic Memorial next week here at Marciano Stadium as they enter every year that tough three game stretch. It's Catholic Memorial, then BC High at Harvard, and then those Hawks from Severian. BCA will be there to bring you the coverage from Alumni Stadium at Harvard University. And the Hawk Bowl out in Westwood. Yeah, Matt, the delay is uh, the referees working on one of the first down, one of the markers, 10 yard markers. Looks like he's got it fixed. Clock running, two and a half minutes to go. Second and now about seven, so they afforded the Wildcats a yard during that lengthy stoppage. It is Benny Randolph in the shotgun. His handoff goes right up the gut for a gain of about four. That was number 23 for the Wildcats, Seth Mullen. Randolph in the shotgun, split receivers, one to each side, flanked by Mullen. And Randolph again stuffed at the line, pushed ahead. And when all is said and done, the ball might wind up close to the first down marker. Two miles, quite the difference from what we saw last week up in Lexington where senior quarterback Sal Freilich ran all over the boxers and found whatever holes he wanted to. Weymouth's running attack has been held at bay tonight. Yes, it has. It's good to see the boxers rebounding as far as defensive side goes on containing the quarterback. I mean, he's got a few yards here or there. They're working the ball down slowly, but nothing big. Timeout called by Weymouth. So with 48 seconds left and a fourth and one for the Wildcats. They're probably debating whether they should go for it or try to kick about a 25 yard field goal. Seven nothing boxers with 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. Tell you, Matt, the skies are looking awfully threatening right now. Here we go. Little water never hurt anybody. Fourth and inches for the Wildcats. Brockton stacking the box. It is Benny Randolph. In the shotgun, receiving the snap. He's going to go right ahead as a first down and about five additional yards. So a first and 10 for the Wildcats. Big, big first down right there, Matt. Left side of that offensive line did a nice job opening up uh, enough room 
for the quarterback, Randolph, to get in there and get the first down. There's going to be a first and goal to go for Weymouth. The ball spotted just inside the boxer's 10-yard line. It's first and goal from the 10-yard line. First and goal to go for the Wildcats. Benny Randolph again in the shotgun. Man in motion, some extra protection to the right side. Randolph gets stuffed. And it'll be second and goal from the 11, about a one yard loss on the play. Yeah, that was a nice job by the defense. Again, Dexter Cumberland leading the pack. Plugging up that hole. have reached the end of the first quarter. The score seven nothing, the boxers on top of the Weymouth Wildcats. Miles, what did you see that you liked from the defense and of course the offense for the Brockton boxers? Well, as far as the defense goes, I like that the boxers haven't given up any big plays. They've made Weymouth earn every yard out there to get to the point where they're at now. Offense, well, they made the big play and got in there and got a score. Well, we are joined by a special guest in the booth right now. It is none other than Mayor Bill Carpenter. Mayor, you're back in your old stomping grounds, the Peter Farley press box here at Marciano Stadium. How's it feel? You must be good luck for the boxers because almost the second you stepped in the press box, Rosen Pierre ripped off a 62-yard touchdown run for the boxers. What did you see from a football standpoint that you liked from Brockton in the first quarter? Well, I think this is a big test here right now, Matt. Uh, second and goal from just inside the 10. This is a boxer defense that gave up 42 points last week. They've got a chance to make a statement with the stop on this series right now. Of course, last week they, you know, I actually come out of the opener encouraged. They gave up three touchdowns early. They didn't quit. They played hard, outscored Lexington for the rest of the game. And, uh, you know, they, they fought and clawed their way back to get within one score. So uh, I think although it's tough to lose one to open the season on the road, I think there are a lot of positives coming out of that game. But there's no doubt they need a win against Weymouth tonight to get their season going in the right direction. Well, the next couple of games for the boxers against the vaunted Catholic Conference. Talk about how football has changed since you've been in the booth for the public schools, Brockton in particular, and what you see against uh, these couple of early tests for the boxers that you like the matchup going against CM, Severian, and BC High. Uh, I'm okay with CM. I'm not too sure about Severian and BC High. Uh, you, you don't find out how good the boxers are until they play the Catholics. The Catholics are the measuring stick. And uh, we'll find out from those three games how seriously the boxers will be able to contend in the postseason. But let's uh, grab this play right here, Matt. Third and eight, third and goal from the eight. Third and goal from the eight, as you mentioned. 10-25 left to go in the second quarter. Benny Randolph in the shotgun, only one receiver this time. It's going to be a pass, and it incomplete. rolls incomplete. That was number 17 for the Wildcats. Standing in a quarterback who is not listed on our roster. So let's see what Weymouth does here with uh, fourth and goal from the eight. Looks like I think they're gonna go for the field goal. That is the third quarterback for those keeping score at home that we've seen from the Wildcats early in this game. Well, whether he makes this kick or not, that's a big stop for the boxers to hold them for three after giving up most of the field for the Wildcats to get down here within uh, the red zone. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So, seven to three, the boxers leading the Weymouth Wildcats. About a, we call it a 25 yard field goal for the Wildcats. I think that's okay from the boxers standpoint. They were first and goal, and you held them for the three, you maintain the lead, you get the ball back. Um, you know, I, I think that's for, again, for a defense that gave up 42 last week, I think that's a big stop for them not to give up six there 
and allow the boxers to get offense to get back on the field with the lead. It seems to me, just watching a little bit tonight, what I hear, there's a lot of young talent on this boxer team. And I remember from all my years during the games with Charlie Bergeron, Charlie always said, you wanted to play Brockton early in the season because the boxers were always a lot tougher at the end of the year than they were at the beginning of the year. Brockton always improves dramatically most seasons over the course of the season. So just because you lose one on the road to open the season, a win here tonight, get back to one and one. Let's see where they can go. Mayor, you're uh, quickly becoming known as the construction mayor. The same <laughs> is true here Takes at Marciano Stadium. Takes the carpet and build the city. <laughs> yeah. Talk about the uh, construction going on just to our left at the Rocky Marciano statue well, as the, the kickoff here. is returned and a, quite a nice return getting all the way up to the 37 yard line. And that's where we'll have the second look of the night at Jose Montero Jr. Jalen Ellaby Cundiff on the return. That was a nice return. Leading scorer for the boxers as his two touchdowns last week kept the boxers alive late in that game up in Lexington. So after this play, I'll tell you about uh, Champions Park and the Rocky statue because it's very exciting. Four receivers, two split to each side. Jose Montero Jr. in the shotgun flanked by Rosenpierre to his right. Montero back to pass. He's going to keep it himself. Gets across the line of scrimmage before he is stopped. Maybe a gain of about one after forward progress. Like to maybe see him take a little bit better care of that ball running in yeah. traffic. Uh, but uh, the Rocky statue, we're very excited as you look out there. Champions Park now will be known as the Andrade Family Champions Park is almost complete. The masonry brickwork is done, the granite's installed, the wrought iron fence went up this week. So we encourage people at the game, take a look at the uh, the park and the statue on their way in or the way out. But uh, we're just trying to finalize a date now, but I believe that sometime in October, we will formally uh, dedicate the uh, Andrade Family Champions Park at the Rocky Statue. Generous spot, second and eight to go for the boxers. Trips to the far side. Montero in the shotgun, receiving the snap, keeping it himself and diving ahead, just barely getting back to the line of scrimmage. So we're excited, you know, it's been a long time coming with the statue. It's, it's been years of work by a lot of people, but you know, it's been built with either work, donated, donated funds, donated goods. You know, we've been able to build this park without using any taxpayer money and uh, we're thrilled and we really appreciate Roy Andre and the Andre family making a substantial contribution to allow us to finish the project. Four receivers and Montero back to pass, looking long to the near side and tripping himself up was number 13 of the boxers, Tejon Darty Glenn. That's okay though, that's a nice first down. First and 10 for the boxers. And interesting here, it looks like he's gonna bring him right back up to the line of scrimmage. It will be the same formation, four receivers will split to each side. Montero Jr. again in the shotgun. This time a handoff to Rosenpierre and he busts open another good one is he's off to the races, brought down at the 22 yard line and that's another big gainer for Rosenpierre. And no one's ever confused me for a football coach, but it seems to me like giving the ball to Pierre might be a good idea. Yeah. And then once again, he's gonna bring him right back to the line, so limiting Weymouth's ability to substitute and change the defense. Montero Jr. again in the shotgun. High snap handed to Pierre, who gets up the gut. A gain of, we'll call it five on the run, should be a second and about five as we take a look at that replay. Excellent job for Pierre on the, that's the long run. Bouncing off of his linemen in the blocks. Good awareness by Rosen Pierre. Montero Jr. back to pass. Gonna keep it himself. He finds a hole. He's headed for the end zone. And that's gonna be good for. No, they're, they're gonna marking call him it. down inside uh, the one. I thought. He might have fallen across the goal line, but it's going to be first and goal yeah. from about the half. And a little premature celebration there for the boxers. They've got to get the right personnel back out on the field. But it's a first and goal inside the one. Quarterback keeper for Montero, and he gets in this time, and that's a touchdown for the boxers. 
Now it's good, and that's a nice, uh, nice drive coming back to respond by the defensive stand by the boxers. Only the field goal for Weymouth, and then Brockton comes right back and puts seven, six so far, hopefully seven in a minute, back up on the board. Toba to attempt the extra point for the boxers. And the botch snap. And Rosenpierre scrambling with it. He's going to throw it away. The kick. Uh, the extra point no good. So 13 to 3 with 7-12 remaining in the second quarter. Mayor, we're talking about Rocky Marciano boxing, making a little bit of a renaissance with the McGregor Mayweather circus. And now we've got Canelo Alvarez and Triple G going at it. Your thoughts on boxing, McGreg uh, Mayweather rather being Well, let's 50 talk about the fight. First of all, Canelo against uh, uh, Triple G is going to be a much better fight than the Mayweather fight was. I didn't think the Mayweather fight was much of a fight. I thought Mayweather carried uh, McGregor for the first three rounds. But I think Canelo Alvarez and uh, Triple G has the makings of a great fight. And what I think will be a great fight, I like Triple G starting to get a little long in the tooth. Alvarez is a great fighter, uh, but uh, if I were putting money on the fight, and I'm not, but if I were, I think it'd be on Triple G. Talk about boxing's renaissance and whether you think that McGregor, uh, Mayweather rather, being 50-0 as Weymouth has a decent return up to their own 46-yard line. Mayweather 50-0, does he hold a candle to Rocky the heavyweight champion of 49 and 0. Well, it's kind of like comparing uh, Babe Ruth and Mark McGuire. I mean, it's completely different eras. The sports changed dramatically. Uh, I do know that Floyd Mether is not the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. So I don't think, uh, despite the fact that Mayweather has had a uh, highly successful but rather dull career, uh, takes anything away from Rocky's accomplishment and, and, you know, Mayweather to his credit has fought 50 pro fights and never lost one, but he's not the undisputed heavyweight champ. Way too many weight classes, way too yeah. many alphabet pseudo organizations to compare it to what Rocky did when he was the one and only undisputed heavyweight champion of the world and walked away with that undefeated record. Great answer. The give to <laughs> number 23 of Weymouth, that is Seth Mullen for his third carry of the day. Gets ahead maybe for a yard. It'll be second and nine. So I'll, I'll share a little inside secret with you then. We have already made an initial reach out to Mayweather's people to see if we can get him to come visit Brockton and come visit the statue. We think he'd have a real interest in it, being able to tie his career with Rockies. I will say that in the post-fight press conference, Mayweather was very gracious with his remarks towards Rocky. We didn't have any Larry Holmes moments, so uh, I, I, I do acknowledge the fact that Mayweather was very respectful to Rocky and his legend. Benny Randolph on the keeper. He gets around a few boxers and charges ahead for a gain of about five. It'll be third and a long four for the Wildcats. Yeah, I got the same feeling after the fight. I think Mayweather felt a little honored to even be mentioned right. in the same class as uh, Rocky Marciano. It's just, it's, it's different generations, yes. different eras. The sports are not the same. Uh, however, you know, someone said to me this week, would you really think you might get Mayweather to come to Brockton? I said, hey, we got Mick Foley to come to Brockton. We'll get Mayweather to come to Brockton. We got Larry Holmes here when we dedicated the statue. Not the only big name you're trying to get to Brockton. The Patriots Foundation donated a playground on Ward 6 on the north side. Talk about that, the importance of keeping the kids active as the pitch out to Mullen has a gain of about two. It'll be fourth and three for the Wildcats. And you're trying to get one of the crafts down here for the ribbon cutting of that park. Well, the trick with the crafts is which one you get. So, I mean, you know, I, we're <laughs> certainly hoping to get uh, some really Great representation from the uh, Patriots. We'd love to get a couple players down here. There'll be a groundbreaking and then there'll be a dedication. So there'll be two different events. I'm not sure which one the Patriots will want to be the bigger. Uh, but we're hoping, for a, we're hoping for a groundbreaking before the end of this month and to have the playground installed by the end of next month. And it's an aggressive schedule, but we're looking and hoping to have that playground in by Halloween. Looks like we're going to have a timeout Whatever. with the fourth down call here coming up for Weymouth. You know, they're 
just on the boxer side of midfield. Place where you probably take a shot on fourth down and see if you can convert. Well, there's a certain gray area we always talk about. Way too long for a field goal in high school. A little bit too short for a punt. Well, I guess it depends on the situation here. Weymouth's uh, down 10 points. Do they play conservative, try to keep it close here for a while, see if they can pin the boxes down deep in their own end? There's still almost five minutes left in the half. Or do you figure this might be one of the better field positions you get as the game goes along? Let's try to continue the drive. But I don't know if I would want to give the boxes the ball at midfield with another four, almost five minutes remaining in the half. But let's see what the let's see what Weymouth comes up with here. Coming out of the timeout, it's fourth in. Yeah. Long like they got three, it's almost about three and a half or four for the Wildcats. It's interesting. It looks, they're in a punt formation. Boxers do not have anyone back deep for the punt. Brockton jumping across Ooh. the line. From where we're standing here, uh, we'll look for the replay. I thought the center moved first and the defensive line reacted to him, but let's, uh, let's see how the officials saw it. It's going to be offsides against the boxers. So Whoa. that's that's a big penalty. That's Let's watch the replay. Yeah. Okay, I take it back. Boxers were offsides. The center reacted to the two defensive linemen jumping over. Boy, that's that's really a big mental error by the boxers here. You know, fourth down and less than five. They're in formation. They're going to do everything they can to pull you offsides, and the boxers went for it. And particularly, two interior linemen on a punt formation should never be offside. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Trips to the far side. The first time this game we have seen more than two receivers. The Randolph completes it to number seven, who is taken out of bounds, Evan Cooper, who is listed as a quarterback on the roster. So Weymouth with some, uh, some roster trickery going on. Well, so wasn't Julian Edelman at one time, so. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> It's great to be back up here in the box with you guys. I, uh, I think in 17 years I missed three games, and uh, it was a big part of my life for a long time, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Well, sounds like you haven't skipped a beat. Jump oh, no. right in. No. Maybe after the election we'll come do part of a game with you. Randolph charges ahead, and that should be good enough for another Weymouth first down. That could be a critical penalty there by the yeah. boxers. I mean, they've allowed Weymouth to continue to the drive. Now Wildcats pick up another first down. There's still four minutes here in the half, and they're uh, marching their way deep into boxer territory. I, big, big mental error on that offside on the fourth down. And again, typical of early in the season. Also, boxer teams historically see a lot of penalties early, and over the course of the season, they decrease. Randolph in the shotgun, four receivers split to each side. It's gonna be a quarterback keeper and he's going to be taken down in the backfield for a four yard loss. Uh, that's great, great defensive penetration there, forced the quarterback outside. I don't have a, well, you don't have a box of roster? What's going on here? Oh, this is, I see, okay. Sonny Oak and Lola, the senior Yep. for the boxers also a starting member of the boxer basketball team nice play but it was the interior defensive pressure that forced the quarterback outside where Sonny could get him well mayor your family and children have been very involved in boxer athletics a couple of them playing for the boxer hockey team kind of a sports I'll call it a renaissance under athletic director Kevin Caro's Randolph pitches out incomplete a lot of competitive in the tournament teams for the boxers. Volleyball, uh, hockey almost defeated Franklin in the tournament last year. Soccer competes every year for a state tournament. Football, we went all the way to the third round against BC High. The athletics are starting to come back to Brockton. Well, we've got a great athletic tradition at Brockton High School. Not so sure it's in volleyball, uh, but uh, you know, they, Kevin Cairo, I think, is doing a great job as the AD. I go back with him quite a ways, and I think he was a, a real good fit for the school system right now. And, and uh, of course, I love Tom Kenny, and he's probably one of my all-time favorite athletic directors, along with... Uh, oh, deep pass deep. is going oh. to be off the fingertips, but a flag thrown, I believe. 
So that looked like that may have been a free play for Weymouth, and uh, they almost converted on the touchdown. I think and we I think might see an illegal ball. formation against the Wildcats as there were two men in motion. I think they're going to call roughing the passer. Watch well, here. The flag was thrown before the quarterback hit. They might have seen that and altered their call based on that. Oh, well, you're right, but the illegal formation against the Wildcats. And roughing, and the, it's passer. And roughing yeah. the pass. So two penalties. They're going to offset. And so it will remain a third and about 17 for the Weymouth Wildcats. That's another mental error by the boxers defense. Uh, this should be a fourth and long right now for Weymouth, if not for the roughing the quarterback call. I think the boxers. If you don't are a take the bit personal foul, you, de you decline the penalty, and they're fourth and 16 here, and they got to do something with it. I think the boxers are a little bit lucky that there was in illegal formation, otherwise it would have been a free first for the personal foul. Four receivers split to each side, Benny Randolph in the shotgun, and we're gonna yeah. have a timeout called by Peter Colombo and yeah. the Brockton Boxers. Defensively, Bobby O'Neill saw something he didn't like out there, and uh, that timeout was called from the sidelines. So in this third and long, Boxers looking not to give up anything big, try to play contained, make him do everything underneath. But uh, Coach O'Neill clearly looking out there saw something not matching up the way he wanted to and took the time out. Good opportunity, pull him aside, talk to the defense about exactly what they need to be doing here. 321 left to go in the first half, 13 to three. The boxers on top of the Weymouth Wildcats. And the, ha the Brockton High School marching band getting ready for their first halftime show of the year. Oh, this is it's interesting. I think over the years, most of the time, the, the band wouldn't come out on the field for the halftime show for the first home game. They usually waited for the second home game, so band must be pretty good this year, but, you know. That being said, let's I face know it, you've been out of the booth for a while, but the MIAA... Half the, half the people here in the stands are here for the halftime show, unfortunately. <laughs> Man in motion sends trips to the near side, and yeah, we're going to we have go. another illegal formation against the Wildcats. Yeah. Two men in motion. Uh, they're going to call it a false start as one yep. of the three receivers on the near side jumped early. That works in arena football, but not here. <laughs> Mayor, talk about the, it's really a family tradition with boxer football. You're here with your grandson, Cam, tonight. The Columbos, it's always a, the Caruso's, a big family tradition in boxer football. I, I Absolutely, and uh, I love seeing Armin still down there on the sidelines, and he just... The guy doesn't change. I mean, cheapest. I was interviewing him for the pregame shows about 25 years ago, and he hasn't changed a whole lot. It's great to see him still out here. I'm a big fan of senior coach Colombo, along with Peters. Third and forget about it for the Wildcats. Benny Randolph, or rather it's number three back to pass, and it's going to be complete. Well short of the original line of scrimmage, that was Tyler Campbell, one of four quarterbacks listed on the roster, and he yeah. is the fourth quarterback to take a snap for the Wildcats. And that's, if you're the boxers, that's exactly what you were willing to give up there. So it makes it about hear. fourth, then we'll call it 17 again for the Wildcats who are in punting formation. Okay. Weymouth may go for the coffin corner this time, see if they can pin the boxes down deep. High end over end kick, falling at the 11, taking a bounce straight up in the air and it's touched down by Adrian Quinn. That's not a bad kick for Weymouth there, but again, boxer defense bends but doesn't break. So 2.27 left in the second quarter. Brockton takes over. Brockton will receive the second half kickoff. So an opportunity for the boxers to really put the Wildcats away. I'm going to jump out of the booth, guys. Great to see you, Matt, Miles. Pleasure. Oh, pleasure. Go boxers. Go boxers. Take care. First and 10 for the boxers at their own 12-yard line. Jose Montero Jr. flanked by Rosen Pierre, two receivers to each side. 
to give to Pierre, who finds a hole and he turns up field. He's at the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, and he sees daylight. 30, the 20, the 10, the five, and the end zone, his second long touchdown run of the day for Rosen Pierre. Wow. Pierre has a burst of it. There's some laundry on the field, the late flag thrown at about the 46 yard line. I think it's gonna come back. It's gonna be holding against the boxers. Oh, but you just, did you see the burst of energy? Those defenders had the angle and went front of Pierre and somehow he put that burst of energy on and just ran right by him. Wow, shame and that so has to come back. There it is on instant replay. Defenders had the angle on them. They just couldn't get them, get to them. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, Matt, we got a lot to look forward to in the year 2017 of this Brockton Boxer football team with their running attack. And so that is a spot foul. It'll be first and 10 from the 35 yard line. And the give to Rosen Pierre bounces off a couple of people in his way. And that was not a first and 20 due to the play being a touchdown that was called back. Well, second and 10, second and seven. Similar to a pass interference penalty, it's a spot foul, it goes to where the penalty was committed, but a first down and we have flags thrown, it's gonna be a false start against the boxers. I think folks are still kind of hyped up from that long touchdown run that was called back by Pierre. Makes it second down and about 12 yards to go. The give to Pierre and this time he's bounced down for a loss. It will be second and we'll call it 15. Matt O'Neill on the tackle. Two receivers to each side. Montero Jr. back to pass. He splits up field, gonna keep it himself. Still on his feet, and it takes three Wildcats to bring the senior quarterback down. Past the original line of scrimmage, it'll be third and about eight. We're gonna take a look at that replay. Plenty of time for Jose Montero Jr. And just ultimately deciding to keep it himself and we have a timeout call by Brockton. So I'm seeing no ill effects on Montero's left knee. Not at all. And it looks like it's a fourth down and seven yards to go. It is a Fourth down for the boxers, we'll call it seven. For those interested in other football action around Massachusetts, the Bridgewater Raynham Trojans, who have been the only team in the last three years to defeat the Severian Hawks, are trailing 15 to seven as the boxers get ready to punt. A high end over end kick down at the 30 and that's where it's touched down by the boxers. So it's 15 to seven, Severian on top of Bridgewater Raynham. Severian likes to put up like seven touchdowns against any opponent, unable to do so against the Trojans. Yeah. Trojans came in ready to play the uh, Hawks. The 
Marshfield holding BC High. The score there, BC High 13, Marshfield 7. Those are the two next opponents for the boxers along with Catholic Memorial next week. The Knights, very, very scary. 36 seconds left in the second quarter. Benny Randolph gives off and finding a hole is number 23, Seth Mullen, and he gets across the 50 to the boxers 48 yard line. Wow, that was a nice hole by the boxers. You'll see, excuse me, by Weymouth. And the running back took advantage, put his speed on. Got into boxer territory. Timeout called by the Wildcats to stop the clock with 30 seconds remaining. Now I might be wrong here, but on the replay, and I've seen, I've noticed this a few times already. The quarterback drops his hands. Now that should be a false start. He kind of yeah. shakes, yeah, shakes his hands his up. Hands. Watch for it here. Right there, and that could be considered a false start as Seth Mullen charges ahead for a gain of about three. Only 17 seconds and counting left in this uh, second quarter. Looks like this might be the last play of the first half. Clock running, four receivers as Benny Randolph is in the shotgun and taking a shot deep. And it's going to fall incomplete. Time expires and that'll do it for the first half. The score 13 to three, boxers on top, Miles. What did you see that you liked? What did you see that the boxers need to improve on in the second half? Well, I tell you what, I like the running attack. The running attack looks very strong right now. They haven't passed the ball much, but the quarterback Montero has been able to elude the defense, get some yards running the football, but he looks like he wants to pass before he runs. As far as what I didn't like, well, it looks like they were a little nervous right at, at the front, the defense, but there wasn't a lot to be um, negative about as far as the boxes going that first half. They look pretty good. Well, we're going to step aside and take a listen to the Brockton High School marching band for their first halftime show of the year. Again, the score at halftime, 13 to three, the Boxers leading the Wildcats. <laughs>
Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium for the second half of action between the Weymouth Wildcats and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, 13-3 coming into the second half. Brockton has had success through the year on the ground on the defensive side of the ball. The penalties have started to hold the boxers back. Yeah, the, the penalty took a touchdown away from um, the boxers. But one thing the boxers' defense has to do is get that ball back to their offense a little bit quicker. They let Weymouth drive the ball a few times, take a lot of time off the clock. They need to do a little bit better job on getting that football back for this exciting offense. Montero Jr. fakes the pitch, still on his feet, getting around Wildcats left and right, finally taken down after a gain of about eight yards. It'll be a second and two. Yeah, a lot of juking and jiving on that play. Trips to the far side, Montero Jr. in the shotgun. He's going to again take it himself. Now he pitches out to Rosen Pierre. Montero Jr. takes a huge hit after pitching the ball out. No flags thrown, and Pierre has enough for a first down. That was a big hit, Matt. Pierre wanted to give some damage. He lowered the shoulder, but the defensive player for Weymouth was ready, and that was a collision. Trips to the far side again, Montero Jr. splitting out to the boxer sideline, pitching out to Pierre. Pierre lowers his shoulder and has a gain of about six to the 50 yard line. Dexter Cumberlander. Again with, oh we have an, I thought we had an injury, I saw players starting to go down to their knee. But trips to the far side again for the boxers, hurry up offense. Montero Jr. hands off to Pierre. Pierre has enough for a first down. Well, that might be Dexter Cumberlander in the backfield for the Boxers. Yes, yeah, similar body stature out there on the ball field. I could see how you could get them mixed up. Cumberland, another one that likes to dish out punishment as he's running with the football. And this one ahead for a boxer first down. Rosen Pierre on the carry for that one. Yeah, nice job by Pierre to find the first first yard first yard marker. Get that first down for the boxes like they're in a the hurry up offense. Star studded event here at Marciano Stadium. We have Olympic hopeful for the nation of Haiti. Vanessa Clairvaux in attendance, of course running at Alabama as the boxers have started the ground and pound attack. Rosen Pierre right up the gut. That young lady who just came up and said hi is going That's to the Vanessa University Clairvaux. of She's, uh, she, I believe she graduated the University of Alabama. Now training in Florida, she'd like to run in the Olympics in hurdles as this is a deep pass wide open but can't haul it down is number 13 Tejon Darty Glenn and Glenn had the defender beat it was just the the pass was a little, little bit too bit much underthrown. arch and underthrown you'll see it right here on the replay offensive line gives the quarterback good protection you can see how much he had him just underthrown as you said a little bit now, we have to mention, when Vanessa Clairvaux came up here, the first person she asked for was the seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated Nubi Ratto. There you go. And she went to Alabama. She went to Alabama, now training in uh, right outside of Miami and hoping to run in the Olympics in hurdles. We have a false start I believe against the boxers roll tide roll tide and training 
hoping to run for Haiti. Is running in the World Championships next year. Good for her. And proud graduate of Brockton High School. And the the cool story that I we, we interviewed her last week during the game up in Lexington. The cool thing that I did not know is perseverance pays off. She was kicked off of the Brockton High team as a freshman. And now she's competed in the national championships through the NCAA. She's gonna run in the Olympics and she was kicked off. So she overcome quite she a bit. She overcame quite a bit. Of course, she's up here visiting for a few weeks. Not just because she loves Brockton High, but Hurricane Irma has completely ripped apart Florida and she's not sure that she has a place to go back to that's in one piece. Eight fourteen to go in the third quarter. It's a third and 11 for the boxers. Trips to the far side. Glenn Darty, the lone receiver to the near side. Man in motion, the give is to number 14, who charges ahead. Actually 24. 24, that is Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. And he is close. It'll be a fourth and the long one. It'll be fourth and one for the boxers. Look for the quarterback keeper here. That was a nice run by uh, Ellerby Cundiff. And the boxers really excel on those jet sweeps on the end around. Montero under center, trying to draw the Wildcats off sides. Steps back, now back under center. To give to Pierre, he charges ahead, lowers the shoulder, and forward progress should afford him a first down. That was good communication between quarterback and the coaching staff on what to do. They were trying to draw Weymouth off sides. Weymouth wasn't going for it. Brockton still had some time left to do something. They decided to go along with the play and made the right call. First and 10 for the boxers. 7.45 to go. Split receivers for the boxers, one to each side. Montero Jr. under center. We have a flag thrown and a false start called from 40 yards back. The flag thrown from the end zone and that will make it a first and 15 for Brockton. Long pass is going to fall incomplete, intended for Ellerby Cundiff. Brockton Had trying to make the get big play right there. Didn't fool um, Weymouth. Had the accuracy, but you can't just throw into double coverage. Second down and 15. So second and 15 for the boxers. 7.15 now left in the third quarter. Long drive for the boxers. This is still the opening drive of the second half. Montero Jr. cuts up field, ripped back down by his jersey. The ball is out. And I believe Weymouth has recovered the fumble. And they have. Yeah, you'll see on the replay, Montero was not protecting the football, knocked right out of his hands. See him right there. See, right, oh, the ball came out earlier than I thought it did. He was grabbed by his elbow and 
I believe that was number 45 knocking that one loose for Weymouth. Jalen settles. Big turnover for the boxers. They was uh, moving down the ball, moving down the field, taking a lot of time off the clock. Benny Randolph on the keeper. He's going to be dragged down for a one-yard loss, second and 11 for the Wildcats. Nice job there by Nate Durplies, number seven. Came out of nowhere. Important to note that is the first turnover that the boxers have committed this season. No interceptions or fumbles last week at Lexington. Clean through the first half here. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Second in a very generous spot, second and 10. Randolph again on the keeper, and he this time is gonna be no doubt a loss for the Wildcats. It should be third and about 12. Oh, that defense for the boxes is fired up right now. You'll see it right here. Big number, it looks like 76. Give him a big bear hug. Possibly Jonathan Vermont. Third and long for the Wildcats. Trips to the near side. Back to pass and incomplete, hearing footsteps. I was gonna say the same thing, Matt. Young man heard footsteps. Adrian Quinn, the intended receiver. He should have caught that. If he did, he might have paid the price. Uh, yeah. The cheerleaders have entered the stands here at Marciana Stadium, lining the aisles. I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody, but I did see their warm up. Fake punt, now he drops it, trying to play with the boxers minds and out of bounds at about the 37 yard line, and that's where the boxers the will boxers take will over. Take over. The second possession in the second half at their own 44-yard line. Now, if we can ask people to be out of the stairwells, we have a presentation by our cheerleaders. Cheerleaders have gotten the fans pumped up here. They're, they're, they're rocking the house. They're rocking it right down, as they say. Flag thrown and... Ben chipping in with the assist on that one. You mean rocking the house? Rocking the house. Can't rock the house without a drum line. That's right. Penalty against the boxers puts it to a first and 20. Clock running, 5-12 in this third quarter. Trips to the near side, Montero Jr. in the shotgun. Glenn Darty, the lone receiver to the far side. Back to pass, a little screen pass, complete to number nine, who has an opening. He's across the 50 to the 45, the 40, still on his feet to the 30. Brought down at the 27 yard line was number nine of the boxers, Paul Mitchell. Yeah, nice run by Paul. He followed his blocks. He was patient. You'll see it right here on the replay. 
See how he holds up, very patient with his blocks and goes out to the outside. Uses his speed to get into uh, Weymouth territory. Oh, that pass was a little high, Matt, right there. No, I'm okay. Young, what about you, Mad Dog? If it's free, it's Ma Ma it. Mad Dog wants one. The not so newly named athletic director taking care of the press box up here. I'll wait for mine to come back. It is a second and first. ten for the boxers. Four and a half minutes to go. Trips to the far side. Montero Jr. receives the high snap. Gives it right to Rosen Pierre. Or rather, this is number 30 who has a first down. Dexter. And that is Dexter Cumberlander. Doing it on both sides of the ball for the boxers. Yeah, we're seeing Dexter is the full type of uh, football player. Plays defense as well as offense. You'll see it right here. Cuts in and out, sheds tacklers. And holding onto the ball as he was ridden to the ground. Montero Jr. on the shotgun yet again. Hand off again to Cumberlander, who's trying to turn the corner at the 10, and he's ridden down at the 8. Cumberland, a tough runner for the boxes. We're inside the four minute mark here in the third quarter. It's gonna be a second and about three to go for the boxers. Three receivers set, Montero Jr. flanked by Cumberlander. Now to pass complete to Ellerby. Cundiff still on his feet to the end zone. And it's a touchdown for the boxers. That was a nice run, you'll see it here on the replay. Shannon Thomas on the run for the boxers. Or rather, number 93. That is Dimitri Dorenville. And you can see the, that one Weymouth player got the initial hit and just bounced off the running back, and he kept going in. You know after he bounced off him, he was going in for the score. Extra kick, he's up and good. So 20 to three, the boxers on top. The three and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. A great catch and run by Dimitri Dorenville. Yeah, that was a nice boxer um, drive right there. To really take command of this football game with 331 left in the third quarter, 23. Max Tobob to kick off for the boxers. Back deep. I believe that's Benny Randolph. Tobob with a squib. This one bouncing around and taken. Returned to about the 36 yard line. So, first and 10 for the Wildcats. 327 left to go. The band has started to get the crowd rocking here as we approach the fourth quarter. Yeah, the crowd's into it. People are dancing. Everybody's happy. 
Talk about the return of the fan section here, the student section right in front of us. I'm, I'm impressed. These stands are full here on the home side. We got timeout waiver. Timeout called by the Wildcats. So 20 to three, boxers on top, 327 left to go. First and 10 off the kickoff for the Wildcats. We see yet another quarterback is this pass complete to Randolph. That was number 12 for Weymouth. Dan Picard, the fifth quarterback to take a snap for the Wildcats in this game. Weymouth needs to make some type of uh, run here. Late flag thrown in. Yep, face mask. Face mask against the boxers. Yeah, Free think 15 in the first yard, first down. Yeah, when they made the tackle, they grabbed, one of the players grabbed uh, the Weymouth running back's face mask. And so last week, eight flags against the boxers for 60 yards. Gonna be approaching that tonight as penalties have continued to plague the boxers. Looks like the Wildcats sticking with Picard. And this one given to Mullen, who is brought down behind the line for a two yard loss. It'll be second and 12 for the Wildcats. Yeah, that was a nice job by 93. It's Dimitri Dorinville, yeah. who just scored the touchdown yeah, on the offensive side the of the ball. Yeah, he just overpowered his um, Blocker came right up on the um, running back for a loss. Picard in the shotgun. Back to pass, looking long and deep towards the Weymouth sideline. And no Weymouth receivers in the area, but two boxers close to intercepting that one. Yeah, that was miscommunication between receiver and quarterback. Receiver went inside. Quarterback thought he was going outside. We got third down and about 12. Yeah. Mm. 142 left to go in the third quarter, third and 12 for the Wildcats. We're a bit better off than we were last year at this time at Weymouth High School, the score was six to six and headed to overtime. This one falls incomplete. Yeah, see the Weymouth knows they have to pass the ball a little bit more being behind two scores. And it's just not working out for them as far as the passing game goes. Brockton doing a good job putting pressure on the quarterback and covering those uh, wide receivers and running backs coming out of the backfield. Well, Severian still having trouble with Bridgewater Raynham. The score remains 15 to seven in the middle of the third quarter. Severian leading that one. So 
looks like Brockton, looks like Brockton called a timeout. Well, I'll tell you, if Brockton just keeps putting pressure on Weymouth, because right now Weymouth is having a tough time getting this ball down the field. Brockton needs to get the ball back. No reason they should not if Weymouth goes for well, fourth down on four, fourth down and with 12 yards to go. Still a lot of football left. Miles, do you remember the big quarterback for BC High? Yes, I do. Abraham, he's got three touchdowns on the night. BC He's High a beast. leading that one. He's a beast. Picard in the shotgun trips to the near side. Long and deep towards the end zone Ooh. and I think that one fell incomplete. That Weymouth receiver possibly should have had that. That looked like it went right through his hands. He adjusted to the pass. And the ball looked like it went right through his hands. It was a tough catch, but he should have had it. Let's see. Picard had a decent amount of time and with the rainbow shot right, right there. Right through the open arms. Should have had Nothing it. Nothing but net. Did a right nice job adjusting to the ball. Just couldn't cash it in. Nice replay there by our uh, tech booth. Jose Montero Jr. after the turnover and Downs looking long and deep. He's got LB Cundiff who can't make the full adjustment and it falls incomplete. Yeah, the pass was a little bit inside for the receiver. He did a nice job adjusting, but just a little bit short and inside. Would have been a fantastic catch. Good coverage on the play by Weymouth. Severian has finally started acting like Severian and they've scored two quick touchdowns 29-7 the score in that one 212 remaining in the third warming up right in time to face the Brockton boxers Severian will wear you out by the time the third quarter gets there if you still hanging in there Short run will bring up the third and about seven for the boxers. Problem with playing Zaverian is you use up so much energy to play them in the first half to stay with them. Sometimes you lose a little bit in that third and fourth quarter. And Zaverian still has a lot in their tank. Montero Jr. gives to Pierre, who charges up ahead. He's got a first down for the boxers. That was a nice draw play. Quarterback really slick on that one. Froze the defense just enough for the boxers to get a first down. Pierre basically just running over the defense. Very tough to put down. Looks like it's uh, second and five. Montero Jr. on the keeper is brought down after a short gain. It'll be a third and about three to go. The end of the third quarter, the score of the Boxers 20, the Wildcats three miles. The Boxers have slowed down a little bit on the offensive side of the ball, but still charging and keep things going defensively. Yeah, very interesting third quarter. Not a lot of big plays there by the offense, but the defense has really stepped up and um, kept this uh, Weymouth team in check. You see there your score 23. Well we have 
an all-star cast and crew tonight, Miles. Of course we do. At the helm, we only bring out the best for big games such as the home opener. At the helm, leading the ship, the one and only Paul Mandeville. Next to him, manning all the beautiful instant replays you're seeing, Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. I believe next to him, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong, his stepson, son-in-law, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, J.D. Winters. On camera, we have Rob Curry up top, Trevor Simmons, Jacob Hazel, and last but certainly not least, as Montero Jr. splits up field and overthrows this one intended for LRB Cundiff. The seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated, but those are just stats and numbers. Nubi Ratto, down on the sidelines, in the trenches. Nubi's in the house. Nubi's in the house. And of course, you're listening to the sultry sounds of big game Miles Jackson and Mad Dog Matt Nelson. I did mention that Trevor Simmons was on camera, Mike the Postman's nephew. Doing a great job. Doing a great job. Someone's gotta take over for the Postman when he decides to retire. Might be his nephew, Trevor. Uh, Timeout time called by Brockton. So four seconds into the fourth quarter. I'm sure we'll see more of Wayman throwing the football going into this fourth quarter, down 17 points. Basically, that's, that's three possessions that Weymouth has to score. That's quite a feat to go against the Brockton Boxers in their home opener here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Of course, Brockton coming off of that 14-point loss to the Lexington Minutemen. Going head over heels. I believe was Rosen Pierre. Yeah, that was uh, quite a hit. Upended Pierre. Going low and going for a little cartwheel, but not after he got a first down. So first and 10 for the boxers. Split receivers, one to each side, Ellerby Cundiff. On the near side, he's open over the middle and the pass is broken up incomplete. He was open. Intended for the captain, Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. He was open, man right on him. Pass came down a little low. Let's see what we see here on the instant replay. Good protection. Looks like he should have had it. Sliding down to the ground and being draped by the Wildcats defender. Second and 10 for the Wildcats. Split receivers. Ellerby Cundiff on the near sideline. They give to Rosen Pierre and he busts open another big run and it's a first down for the boxers. See, that run was created. That big hole and run was created because of, you'll see on the replay, where the boxes pass the ball, they open up the defense. Defense is a, isn't quite sure, and that gives the running attack a little advantage. The thing I'm noticing about Pierre Miles, he starts slow, finds the hole, and turns on the jets and just burns oh. them. And he's got some big time jets. As we've seen today, throughout this football game. Boxes again. 
like it's second down and about nine yards to go. Second and about nine for the boxers. Jose Montero Jr. getting the marching orders from the boxer sideline. In the shotgun, man in motion is Ellerby Cundiff. And the pitch out to Ellerby Cundiff. He's surrounded by Wildcat, cuts back the other way, finds a little bit of hole, turns something into nothing, and finds a wall after a gain of about eight, and we have a Wildcat down. You'll see how uh, the running back reverses his field right there, cuts right back quickly. Gets around seven Wildcats. It's a great job. It's like a third down and about three to go, three or four yards. is an injured Wildcat. Working on his right leg. It is number 38 for the Wildcats. John Mundia, senior defensive back. Third down and four. Third and four, 8.51 left to go in a convincing effort for the Brockton Boxers. Even though the Boxers have a 20 to three lead, this is a big third down for the Boxers. They wanna keep this ball control going. Give to Pierre, he finds a hole and dragging defenders with him, gets all the way down to the three yard line. Big run right there for Pierre. It'll that was a clutch run. First and goal. You see Pierre Hart. Gonna spot it at yep. the three. Finds the hole, hits the hole quickly, and gets the first down. Scrum and charging towards the end zone. I believe he's going to be marked just shy. That was a great effort here by Pierre. Sheds a tackle right there. Tip the legs churning and it'll be second and goal for Brockton. Exactly, kept the legs moving. It'll be Cundiff, the receiver to the near side. I'd love to see a little slot pass to LRB Cundiff. Montero Jr. under center, gives it to Pierre, charges ahead, knocking bodies over, and that's a touchdown for the boxers. Money right there. Put it right up the middle to give it to Pierre. You'll see it right here on the replay. Give it to Pierre. I take nice job you see right there by the offensive line. They push the defensive line backwards in order to let Pierre get in there. And once Pierre got it, he didn't try doing anything cute with it. He didn't try looking for a hole, running around the, the uh, turn in the corner, straight ahead, and Toba makes his fourth extra point of the night. 27 to three lead for the boxers, who had seven and a half left to go in the fourth quarter. See, when you have a bruising type running back like Pierre and Dexter Cumberland, liable to break it at any time during the football game, that motivates your offensive line to work a little harder in order to enable to let these running backs do their thing. Wasn't a lot of passing on that drive, just power running either to the outside or right up the middle by this Brockton High offense. Seven thirty-five left in this ball game. 
Brockton has taken command, Matt. Decent return for the Wildcats up to the 41 yard line. Well, it's a high mountain, high mountain for uh, Way Weymouth to climb. I'm sure their spirits are down a little bit right now. You can see number 77 shoulders down a little bit walking to the huddle they've still got seven minutes of football to play and you know Brockton's coming right at them we'll remind you next Friday night we're right back here at Marciano Stadium as the Catholic Memorial Knights come to town and a very good test for the Brockton boxers as this one's overthrown incomplete second and ten for the Wildcats and we go on the road until the end of October when we face Durfee right back here at Marciano Stadium. Follow along the adventures of the Brockton High football team. On Brockton Community Access's Twitter, we are at Brockton Channel. Talk to us, hashtag BCA Sports. Live tweeting the football games this year. We're trying to anyway. Guy's gone high tech on me. Give to Mullen, and he finds a hole across the 50, close to a first down. It was a nice little bit, little bit of running there by the running back. Somehow got a first down on the plate. You'll see it right here. Cuts back nicely. Slides in there for a first down. Sonny Oak and Lola on the tackle. Well, the number three ranked in the state, BC High Eagles, have defeated the number seven ranked Marshfield Rams. 19 to seven, the final on that one. Yet another quarterback for the Wildcats, and this one is overthrown. The quarterback, Tyler Campbell. Looks like Campbell had about eight or nine yards he could have ran right up field but I know they're down trying to get the ball up the field as quickly as possible incomplete pass stops the clock you run it up field clock still runs unless you run out of bounds Boxers look like they're warming up their backup quarterback on the sideline. I think that's a good idea, Matt. That, of course, is number 12, Thomas O'Brien, who started a number of games last year in place of the injured Matt Caruso, who broke his collarbone in the playoff matchup at Newton North. O'Brien eventually led the boxers on a win before being defeated by the BC High Eagles as Weymouth charges ahead for a first down, but a flag thrown. Matt, where's Matt Caruso this day and age? Caruso is playing at Bryant University on a scholarship. Of course, he was part of the dynamic duo with Kingsley Ajoku Dike, who was on a full scholarship at Brown University down in Providence. A lot of Brockton High students going to Ivy League in the last couple of years. Of course, Jen Caruso down at Brown as well. It's not Ivy League, but Aaron Montero playing at BC on a football scholarship. With five and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. 27-3, the boxers up 
on the Wildcats. A lot of smart athletic personnel coming out of Brockton. Furthering their education. And getting to play the game that they love. That would be soccer, basketball, football, baseball. It is Tyler Campbell in the shotgun. And we're going to have a timeout called by Weymouth. It's a second down and about six to go for the uh, Wildcats. Well, looks like the rain held up. The rain the did hold up. The skies were looking pretty dark and bleak, but <laughs> held up to one of the greatest football traditions in Massachusetts. Your Brockton High boxes. This one falling incomplete. If you're interested in Division Three football action, keeping track of former boxers, Ryan Clifford has made a 37-yard field goal for Framingham State, and they lead the Bridgewater State Bears by a score of 19 to nothing. Brian Clifford, I remember Brian. Ryan Clifford, Ryan. of course, probably the most dynamic kicker we've had in hmm. probably about a decade now. Four split receivers as Campbell throws this one. Complete, I believe, number one on the reception, and that would be DeAndre Ellis. Now, DeAndre, what DeAndre should have did, once he caught that football, he should have went Straight right out of, out of bounds. Stopped the clock, but right now it's running with 4.20 to go in his football game. Four oh nine left to go, clock running, 27-3 boxers. Four receivers is Weymouth starting to experiment on offense. Quarterback keeper and finding a hole and finding the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown. Their first of the night was Tyler Campbell, or rather that was Benny Randolph running through the defense of the Boschers. Yeah, let's see what happened here. Wow, just a big hole. I think the boxer was a little bit fooled on that play. I think they thought it was going to to the right side and uh, the quarterback cut right up the middle, barely touched. Extra point kick is up and no good, but a flag. It's gonna be offsides against the boxers. So we'll have a re-kick. Three thirty-eight to go, and a Weymouth re-kick. This kick is up. And this one is good. So on the second attempt, putting it through the uprights was Benny Randolph. 27-10, the boxers up by 17 points. Weymouth scoring their first touchdown of the evening. 
Fox's defense doing a good job this um, football game. Keeping Weymouth in check. Why their offense went out there and um, did their job. Put 27 points up on the board with 338 left in this football game. The boxer's mascot has made his way into the stands, giving our old friend Dennis Hersey some trouble. <laughs> as bobbling this snap is Ellerby Cundiff, or the kick rather, is Ellerby Cundiff now turning up field and brought down at the 24 yard line. <laughs> Before you take off from home, make sure that you take all your trash with you. There are trash receptacles all throughout the city. First and 10 for the boxers, leading 27 to 10 over the Weymouth Wildcats. Three and a half minutes to go in this one. We can pretty much write this one up as a boxer victory. Miles, what have you seen that you've liked from the boxers and things to improve as we go into the Catholic Conference swing? I like their running attack. Their running attack is their strongest gift. I like the way the quarterback looks. Made the right decisions, ran when he had to, concentrated on passing when he had to. Um, the defense looked good all through the game. Just a good all-around effort by uh, Brockton Boxers this evening. Uh, Johnny Horn on the last carry for the Boxers, first and 10. It is Horn again on the carry for the Boxers, a gain of about three yards, second and seven. Two and a half minutes in counting for the Brockton Boxers. Split receivers, one to each side as Thomas O'Brien has taken over. For the boxers, smart move for Peter Colombo. The give to Horn, and it's going to be brought down for a loss. It'll be third and about nine to go. Yes, smart move to get the starting quarterback, Montero, out of there. You don't want to risk injury. Boxers got this game in the bag with 148 on the clock. Get your back up, some reps. O'Brien rolling out to the near side, cutting back inside, finds a hole and gets to the 39 yard line. That'll be fourth and about four for the boxers. Nice decision by O'Brien there when to cut up field. And the boxers are going to punt it away with maybe about a minute remaining. And Weymouth called a timeout as we take a look at the last run. And that's Thomas O'Brien on the quarterback keeper. Losing his helmet was one of the Wildcats, so. He's going to come off for a play. It was number 40 that lost his helmet. Matt Downing, the senior linebacker. So 
Tobu to punt this one away. We have a botched snap, but whistles and a bunch of laundry on the field. It's like movement on the, the boxer side. I believe that'll be a five yard the penalty. Illegal procedure against the boxers makes it fourth and about nine. And again, in punting formation, this one gets off without a hitch. High end over end kick. Falling at the 30, taking a Brockton bounce all the way down to about the 20 yard line. Wow, that was a great punt. Very, very good punt. And that leaves us with a minute and nine the seconds left. Very convincing effort here for the boxers. And Miles, we face Catholic Memorial here next week. What do the boxers have to do in the week of practice ahead to prepare themselves for the Knights? And the Knights have a very pass-heavy attack, but they've also got the big bruising backs. How does the defensive line stand up to that? Well, they got to prepare during the week, listen to their coaches, because their coaches, I'm sure, done their homework on Catholic Memorial, and they just got to um, finish the game plan. High pass is going to be picked off. It's an interception for the Boxers on their own, uh, the Weymouth 40-yard line. Wow. That's a great interception. That was a great, great pick for the Boxers. We'll see who came up with that one. I believe that was number nine, Paul Mitchell. Yeah. Great read by Mitchell. One minute, two seconds left. Brockton should just take a few knees and call it a day. That pass was overthrown a little bit. Defensive back was Good adjustment ready. adjustment by Mitchell yeah. midair to twist and turn and grab that one. Right there on the sideline, kept his feet in. Flags thrown. A false start against the boxers. Second and 15 for the boxers. O'Brien takes a knee with 37 seconds left. And that should just about seal it. They might take one more knee just for posterity. Just for posterity? Just for posterity. Now 15 seconds left. We again want to thank the cast and crew for tonight's festivities. Too many to name, but at the helm, the one and only Paul Mandeville leading the ship and doing a fantastic job at that. And the final score is time has run out 27 to 10. The Brockton Boxers have a home opener win and they move to one and one on the year. Miles going into the Catholic Conference. What did you like what you saw here tonight? Well, again, I, I like Brockton's run and attack. I like their patience out there on offense. Defense, well, the defense held their own. A few times they let Weymouth run down the field and um, take a lot of time off the clock, but they didn't, they bent, they were bending, but they didn't break. So all around it was a good, solid 
effort by both sides and the special teams. Miles, Catholic Memorial comes down to Brockton next week. A devastating loss for the boxers last year at Catholic Memorial High School. Should be a great matchup. What are you looking for from the boxers offense to keep par with the Knights? I'm looking for the box, boxer offense to control that, that line in the trenches. If they can control Catholic Memorial in the trenches, they have a good chance of winning this football game. Catholic Memorial is a different team than they were 15 years ago. They're a real tough con, um, competitor. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, once again, the final score, 27 to 10. The Brockton Boxers with a home opener went against the Weymouth Wildcats. My broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.